Hello everybody, in this video today I'd like to do a quite interesting experiment on how games react to a certain amount of CPU cores. Is there actually an FPS difference when gaming on a single core, dual core, quad core, 6 or 8 core processor, or are games even playable on a CPU with just one or two cores? Let's find out. Now in order to get a somewhat usable result measurement out of this experiment, I of course can't go run the tests with completely different CPUs with different clock speeds, architectures and or platforms. So this is where my trusty Intel i7-6700K Skylake processor comes in action. It's actually a true quad core with hyper threading, which translates to 8 virtual cores for better multi-threaded performance. Now in order to simulate how the games behave with a fewer amount of cores, whether physical or virtual ones, I will disable some cores in the BIOS and when needed, will also turn off hyper threading. Right now in Windows and the device as well as task manager, all on default 8 logical processors show up that are our cores plus the hyper threaded virtual ones. And the amount that shows up here in Windows, that's how many CPU cores the games are able to detect. As for the graphics card, I'll be using the Gigabyte GTX 1070 and will be running the games at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and everything else at pretty much maxed out settings. So without further ado, let's take a look if the frame rate and playability of the games are in fact affected by the number of cores or not. Now the results did not necessarily surprise me. It seems there isn't much of a difference noticeable between an 8, 6 or quad core configuration. But that is with the same identical CPU at the same clock speeds with the same single threaded performance in my case. If you let's say went for a true 8 core processor with 8 physical cores, yes you do get more cores, but due to the higher number of such, they are usually clocked lower, thus offer lower single threaded performance, which means lower frame rates in games. That's why an Intel i7 quad core CPU of the mainstream lineup most of the time does better in games than the more expensive 6 or 8 core i7 extreme variants. In games such as Crisis 3 for instance that seem to rely just as much on the CPU as on the GPU, there is a noticeable decrease in frame rate when comparing 8, 6 or 4 cores. And a very drastic change is the minimum frame rate. And in Rise of the Tomb Raider we better not get fooled by the average FPS, take a look at the minimum values too. But clearly in the majority of games it doesn't seem to matter all that much whether you're playing on a quad, 6 or 8 core setup. Where things start to get critical is dual cores and single cores obviously. There sure still are modern game titles out there that support dual cores, just as well as quad cores, but with every year now, two cores seem to be a critical issue when it comes to playability of the games. Although on paper, basically in the charts, GTA 5 seems somewhat playable, especially if you turn down some settings, but in reality it looks something like this definitely a very very bad experience that I call unplayable. Besides the game does take very long for simple tasks like verifying the game ownership and loading into the game. And hey, some such as Far Cry Primal wouldn't even get past the loading screen because it freezes. Doom froze for a while too at the beginning but seemed to work fine afterwards with good results. Crisis 3 behaves exactly as seen on the charts. I mean it's playable but considering these CPUs paired with a powerful graphics card like the GTX 1070, the result is simply disappointing. The Witcher 3 is a game where we would get a high frame rate but due to the random freezes of a couple seconds, the average frame rate drops by a lot of course. However, I was surprised to find out that Rise of the Tomb Raider, despite the chart showing very poor minimum FPS performance, actually when not running the built-in benchmark, runs better smoothly. 
Now where things get even more interesting is when I turn all the cores off until only a single one's left. The first thing I noticed was the drastic decrease of the startup speed of Windows. Surprisingly, some games allow for a still playable frame rate even at such high settings. However, Crisis 3 doesn't even start up anymore. Same goes for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Far Cry Primal, just like with the dual core, can't get past the loading screen. And in GTA 5, I experienced an infinite loading screen. And yes, I feel I wasted a lot of time there. I did, in fact, wait for like 40 minutes or so. Don't laugh at me. Doom ended up still being playable, but getting into the game was a bit of a hassle with random freezes at the loading screen. And The Witcher 3 was pretty much as playable as it was the case with a dual core, but a bonus problem was the frequent freezing at the menu. So what did we learn? In simple words, don't go for a dual core processor and not to speak of a single core one should you have ever considered doing so. Get at least a quad core no matter if it's a cheap one, it will at least work without any issues. This may be a bit of a silly and inaccurate experiment, but it's a bit of a complicated one. I hope you at least found this video to be entertaining and appreciate the effort and time I put into it. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.